Today's final speaker has been a Toastmaster, I can't believe this number, 44 years, earning the title of Distinguished Toastmaster in 1975. He enjoys sinking his teeth into a slice of strawberry rhubarb pie and savored the sights in Perth, Australia, giving his speech number five titled Lectern, Decorum, and Protocol. Please welcome Carl Athermeyer. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Emily told us about toys. We have another big toy here in Toastmasters, and it's this piece of furniture. <laughs> now, this particular piece of furniture, for some of us, it's just in the way. For others, it can't be big enough. <laughs> for others, we don't even know what it is. So all together now, on the count of three, this is a one, two, three... Podium! Lecture. Podium! 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 But as we have said many times, a lectern is what sits on a podium. A podium is a raised platform upon which we stand, and unless you want to count this entire second floor as a raised platform, we don't have one in this room. So this is a lectern. And there is a cardinal rule in Toastmasters that I've seen violated already a couple of times today, and that is you never leave the lectern unattended. How many people are in the Navy here or were in the Navy or had some connection with the Navy here? Postgraduate school, less than half. This is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Postgraduate school. All right. Well, you know, when you're on a ship, when you're running, the, when you're the ship driver, when you're driving the ship, you have the con, right? Somebody always has the con. Someone is relieved of the con. The con is never left unattended. The lectern is the same way. Someone needs to be in charge. You just don't walk away from the lectern. Someone has to relinquish the lectern to someone else. So that is a cardinal rule. And if you practice that, that's 90% of the battle. Now, the way you relinquish control of the lectern is through the handshake. So let's pretend that Angie was just getting through. So Angie, would you come up here, please? And, and you've just called on me, and she's going to sit over there. So I come up here, and so you're introducing me as Carl Thormeyer. Carl Thormeyer. Uh, thank you, and, and I shake her hand. This handshake relinquishes control. I now have the con, OK? <laughs> sit down, thank you. <laughs> And that should be done without fail. Now, if I'm, I've introduced you, you've done your thing, and I'm coming back up, and you walk away, I'm going to follow you. <laughs> get that handshake. <laughs> all right? <laughs> we had a guy in my club in Honolulu that did this all the whole time, and we learned real quick. So the handshake transfers the con. This is very important. We don't just walk away. Now, another thing with approaching the lectern, and this has come up several times recently, and Robin brings it up all the time, and that is, do you pass in front of the person that is leaving the lectern or behind? Now, in this particular case, Angie was on this side, I was on this side, it wasn't a problem. She went back and sat down, okay? But let's just say I have to go over here, and I introduce Angie Anderson, what am I going to do here? And I'm going to shake her hand, and I'm going to, oh, let me see, what do I want to do here? Oh, I'm going to do a hug, but no, no, you know, okay, there you go, all right? <laughs> All right, a little confusing, a little awkward. Okay, you can sit down. <laughs> a little awkward, all right? But if you always remember that the person approaching the lectern passes in front, because this is someone who is coming forward to speak. The person leaving the lectern passes behind, yielding control, fading, if you will, into the background. So let's do this again. Chair welcomes Andy Anderson to come up here. I back off, she's in front, and see how much simpler that is? Nobody, I didn't trip over her, I didn't give her a hug, anything. All right? <laughs> okay, so that keeps it very simple. Now, there is another way to do this, and sometimes I've seen some people do it and others not. It won't work today because there's not a chair over there. But the best way for, say, a Toastmaster of the day, who is not really sure who's going to trip over their big feet as they come up here, then is to have a chair on either side. So this time, if I introduce Angie Anderson, introduce her, I can come back and sit down over here. All right? Now, I know Angie would just as soon stay up here, but I'm not going to let her, so you can sit down. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, the only problem with that is that if you're in charge, you have to remember to bring your notes with you to the other chair. <laughs> over here, it doesn't do you any good. That's happened to me. So it's kind of a choice of the person who is actually at the lectern as to how they want to handle that. But if they don't want to move chairs back and forth, 
then you need to remember the rule that the person approaching passes in front, the person leaving the lectern passes behind. Now, when does the person coming up have the con? They're shaking hands, right? They're shaking hands. But meanwhile, I haven't really left yet. Okay, I haven't totally been relieved. So Angie comes up here, <laughs> all right, and uh, Angie, welcome in, Angie, and I back off. She's going to acknowledge me, thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Mr. President. She hasn't said that yet. I could stay here all day. Right? <laughs> so that is the, it just say, thank you, it's just a, a common courtesy for the lectern. Thank you very much. And then I sit down. Now we, again, this guy, thank you, Angie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be quite as flamboyant as all of that, of course. But it's important to simply acknowledge. I know some people like to get up here when they're speaking and have some introductory remarks before they formally acknowledge the Toastmaster. And if they're going to do it that way, then they should at least nod to the Toastmaster. Let's say Bill's up here, and he's introduced me. Bill, would you stand up here, please? I shake his hand. And then they ignore him, and the thing I want to know, you know, he's going to stand. <laughs> but if I, if I kind of nod at him, if I nod at him, then he knows I'm acknowledging the fact that he's given me the lectern. I'm thanking you for the sit down, Bill. <laughs> he's given me the lectern. So a simple, a simple handshake with an acknowledgement is what you have to remember. And it's the Navy equivalent, uh, I relieve you, sir, I stand relieved. It's the, it's the equivalent of that. So a uh, very simple way to think about that. And then, of course, when you've been relieved, sit down. Don't keep mulling about up here. And we're really pretty good at that. Now, the last thing I want to cover is introduction and applause. And we pretty well got the applause under control. It was brought up last week and the week before. We applaud from the time a person is introduced to come up to the lectern until they get here, and when they leave, until they have sat down in their seat. And that acknowledges, first of all, that they have something worth saying by coming up here. And that when they're through, we're glad they said what they said, and we're, we want to acknowledge that. Now, if you just have a role at your, at your chair, like Alec as our counter, we was introduced as the our counter, we didn't applaud for him. That's, that's kind of the protocol we use in this club, that if you're just standing up, then we don't applaud until you're done. We want to see what you have to say first. Alec is always worth applauding. So we don't applaud when, when we have someone standing at their, at their, at their seat, or, and what we do when they come up here to the lectern. Now, the Toastmaster, whoever it is, should always, when introducing a speaker, call the speaker's name last. If I hear my name, I'm on my way up here. Maybe he's not through introducing me, and I'm kind of standing here twiddling my thumbs. So however you introduce someone, the name always comes last. So if you remember these rules, everybody has to keep the lectern. Someone has to be in charge of the lectern at all times. It's just like the baby. I have the con. I stand relieved. I relieve you, sir. It's that simple. And I hope with this, you'll be able to do a better job at being in control of this wonderful device. Thank you.